Okay, cool. Well, uh, I wanted to first just uh, welcome everyone and thanks so much for taking time to uh, join us today. We're really excited to have Nathan Schneider joining us from CU Boulder. Um, you'll probably be hearing more people come in on the call in over the next uh, few minutes, but I think we've got a good, a good crew so far. So um, my name is Michael McHugh. I work with Trevor Schultz here at the New School at the Platform Cooperativism Consortium. And I see some familiar faces who have probably been on these calls in the past, but uh, I just wanted to give a quick update on, on what we're doing with these calls and then also just uh, some guidelines. So um, first, you know, these community hangouts, this is our third installment, I think, Trevor, of community hangouts, and we've had a really good response so far. Um, we had 28 people on our first call, 19 on our second. We're really excited to have Nathan here for our third. We'll be doing these uh, throughout the next year as well. So take a look at our Twitter and pay attention to our social media to see when the next uh, few dates will be in the next uh, few speakers. We're still sorting that out though. So if you have a recommendation for someone, uh, do let us know, put it right in the chat feature and we can, um, we can take that uh, feedback and try to get them uh, on a call. And we're also kind of using these calls to give uh, the platform co-op and uh, um, online community a chance to kind of get together and network and meet with different uh, speakers. So um, we'll have ample time for Q&A, but please uh, feel free to ask Nathan uh, plenty of questions when we get to the Q&A portion. Um, and so speaking of Q&A, I just wanted to quickly get through the uh, agenda for today and talk about what we'll be doing. Um, so I'm just going to go, th uh, go through a few more notes um, about the call and then I'll hand it off to Trevor. Um, who will give an update on the Platform Co-op Development Kit and some of the progress we've made um, in that arena and what we're doing on that project. Um, and then he will talk about that work and introduce Nathan Schneider, who will talk for about 10 minutes. Um, and we aim to have this call last for about 30 minutes. If it goes longer than that, that's great. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, Nathan will speak for about maybe 10 minutes and then we'll open it up for questions. So there's no real elegant way to ask questions on Zoom other than people just uh, unmuting themselves and going for it. So um, let's try to be uh, conscientious of other people asking questions and maybe um, take some uh, time to make sure that we can get through a, a variety of questions first before asking a second question. Um, and then just a few uh, best practices. So if you, could, if you guys could keep your microphones on mute while you're not talking, just because sometimes there's background noise and you know, ambulances and whatnot, um, it's, it's best to keep your microphone on mute. And then when you have a question, you can just easily unmute yourself. Um, if you wanna introduce yourself and maybe talk about your work and uh, share some links about the projects you're working on or your social media or your LinkedIn or whatever it is, feel free to write a little blurb about yourself in the chat feature. It's on the bottom bar of the screen. If you just press chat and you can introduce yourself, write a little note and uh, people can connect with you after the call or on uh, social media later. And then finally, you'll see that these meetings are being recorded. There's a little recording icon in the top left corner. If you wanna keep your video off, that is totally fine. But we just wanted to let everyone know that uh, we are recording these and we will put these online on our website at, at platform.coop um, so that other people who can't join at this particular time can still uh, see what we talked about and, and hear what Nathan had to say. Um, and so with that, I think I will turn it over to Trevor, who will talk some more about uh, the projects we're working on and give an update on the Platform Co-op Development Kit. I'm gonna go let Trevor know he's still on mute, hold on. I could talk for 10 minutes and you wouldn't hear anything. It'd be fantastic. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, so I'm, I'm Trevor and uh, yeah, really special and uh, um, uh, heartwarming to see uh, Nathan here, really wonderful. Uh, welcome Nathan and everybody else. Uh, so I will keep this really, really short, uh, the beginning, because this is really about Nathan. But uh, I just wanted to let you know where we are at, because people are asking us uh, all the time, like, what, you know, what's, what's the progress with your work? So just really quickly. 
uh, we, uh, the IDRC, uh, Colin is uh, here, I think, as well. I saw him a minute ago. Yes, he's waving. Uh, he is a software lead uh, at the IDRC, uh, leading our uh, project's uh, software development part. So uh, the co-designers just returned uh, from India, where we are building a platform co-op with uh, CIBA, the uh, Federation of uh, Self-Employed Women. And uh, I have been uh, working, uh, I just gave a talk at the Harvard Law Forum, and uh, there we have uh, started working on a legal clinic uh, with uh, the at Harvard Law School and now also joined uh, possibly by Fordham Law School to really bring some real uh, intellectual force uh, to this uh, legal uh, aspect of starting a platform co-op. Uh, then we just received a, a grant uh, from Open Society to research the impact of platform co-ops in India. So that will also start uh, next year. And uh, in the spring, we will start uh, updating the map of the co-op ecosystem or that nascent started, in fact, right? And uh, so we will collaborate uh, and uh, try to improve this with the input of uh, many of you. Then I wanted to uh, remind you that uh, we have an anthem for platform cooperativism in the making. So you can look at our social media and on the website. Uh, so. Stefania de Kinesi uh, is uh, working on an anthem and we are looking for your input. Then uh, I see Hal's uh, face, our good friend uh, Hal Plotkin there, hello, uh, who led a policy group uh, that basically created legislate, road legislation uh, for Senator Gillibrand and possibly for others to push platform co-ops uh, further. And yeah, I think this is uh, pretty much uh, what I wanted to say. We are also starting a fundraising campaign from the PCC, so you might see something in uh, your e inbox. So please don't delete it, but open it and read it. Um, so the uh, having said that, let me uh, go right into it. So Nathan Schneider probably doesn't need an introduction for most of you, but I will still say that he's a writer and assistant professor of media studies at the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, he has written books uh, on uh, cooperative business, God and the Occupy movement, and edited uh, one on the internet. Uh, reporting articles, he, he um, is reporting for a variety of uh, publications, including The Nation, Harper's, The Chronicle of Higher Education, Vice, uh, Yes Magazine, America, and The Catholic Worker. So welcome to Nathan, and uh, I hand it over and will mute myself very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. And th thank you both Michael and Trevor for getting these calls going. We should have been doing this years ago. Uh, it's a it's a great idea and really important for us to connect more regularly, hear from each other, um, and and strategize. Um, I, I, I'm uh, just gonna offer a few thoughts um, uh, uh, and uh, and then ask some questions um, because to me this is a, an opportunity to to um, just hear from you all about where this ecosystem is going and what we're building um, and how we can, you know, where, where we can direct energy um, because that's uh, uh, kind of the big question for me right now. Um, I just finished writing this book uh, or publishing this book, uh, Everything for Everyone. And so now that kind of is behind me and I'm trying to figure out where to direct energy next. Um, I, I, I had a little bit of a talk prepared, but then I threw it all out in the middle of the night last night because I had this this dream, which is kind of like the most stereotypical like leftist hipster dream you can imagine, where I was like on the barricades with uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, and um, uh, uh, living the you know our new um, kind of leader of the uh, congressional uh, uh, socialist caucus in in DC, right? And um, so we were you know battling some cops or something like that with all these other people, and then. Um, and then afterward, I had a chance to, uh, when the dust had settled, right, I had a chance to uh, ask her what she thought about cooperatives and uh, give her a little pitch and, and say, oh, you know, we really should make this a priority in the new, um, you know, with this new emerging uh, coalition in Washington forming and so forth. And, and she kind of like nodded and looked the other way while I was talking and then cut me off at the end. 
um, all in the dream, of course, and uh, and said, no, no, the, the, you know, that's very nice and cooperatives are a nice idea, but they're marginal and, and small. And, you know, we have this diverse coalition forming. Um, we're building some significant power and, and, uh, uh, and uh, we should be focused on how to use that power to really maximize gains for, for working people and, and uh, uh, change this country uh, writ large. And of course, I, as usual with me, I, I, I didn't have any sort of decent response at the time, but then afterward, right, I'm fuming and, and thinking of all the things that I wish I'd said. Um, and, you know, those are stories from, um, uh, that, that came up in the course of working on this book. Um, uh, stories, for instance, about the, um, uh, the, the strength of cooperatives in building the um, agricultural economy in um, the United States and many countries, uh, uh, many other countries as well, which involved coalitions among, you know, farmers, uh, cross-racial coalitions of farmers and, and immigrant workers in the cities uh, during the populist period in the late 19th century and early 20th century. The, the, um, uh, uh, the rise of the credit union movement, um, drawing on people ranging from, you know, the Ed, Edward Filene, the, the department store magnate and, and black church communities. And uh, in Italy, the conjunction of, of communists and Catholics uh, uniting in about very little else except cooperative business development uh, uh, against Franco and, and other forces and building one of the most vibrant uh, cooperative sectors uh, in the world. And, and then even today, um, the, the kind of remnants of this um, are, are present in, um, in, uh, 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 in, in factions of Democrats and Republicans, you know, very kind of uh, 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 quietly subverting uh, the Trump White House's repeated efforts to defund and dismantle cooperative programs. Um, while also um, passing historic worker ownership legislation in the, the um, Main Street Employee Ownership Act uh, on, a, on a bipartisan basis, not really because there's such great tremendous vision or leadership at this moment around this issue, uh, though there is quietly, uh, uh, but, but of, of powerful organizing that, that happened decades ago. Uh, through that legacy, um, these things uh, become possible, and, and we start to see rumblings of that in, in you know, organizations like the New Economy Coalition, which are uh, building these you know, really uh, powerful um, alliances, I, I think, around uh, uh, intersectional issues, um, around racial justice and climate justice and, and so forth. And, um, and, and there's just so much. And this is a, a, you know, a complaint I've, I've heard regularly in, in my work in, um, uh, in, in trying to share uh, the ideas around platform cooperativism um, in new places is uh, this concern that, that we're talking about something marginal, we're talking about something kind of feeble. Um, and uh, over and over, I have to kind of um, uh, rehearse and, and also remember for myself um, just how much already uh, uh, powerful and radical cooperative organizing has shaped the economy, the best parts of the economy, uh, as it is today, um, and that we need to um, similarly have um, uh, uh, have have that kind of and more ambition uh, for the work that we're doing, um, and make sure that we are setting our sights, you know, again as high or higher uh, than uh, than you know farmers a uh, hundred years ago uh, did, who are trying to figure out how to challenge the power of of urban railroads and and banks and and um, you know I, I I'm always thinking in the back of my head, for instance, here in Colorado about CoBank, a hundred twenty billion dollar uh, agricultural cooperative bank down the road, and then looking at the kind of tiny things we're building, still you know growing fast but tiny things like the consortium and and uh, this Start Co-op effort, which is a, a new uh, equity accelerator for for co-ops, including platform co-ops that. Uh, I, I'm helping to build and, and um, efforts, similar efforts across Europe and Australia. Um, uh, uh, and, and I just want to make sure that we don't get lost in that trap of marginality, that we don't tell that story to ourselves, you know, that we have behind us um, a history uh, and a sense of possibility 
um, that is uh, uh, that's equal to what we can uh, achieve with um, uh, by building democracy more into uh, into our economy. Um, you know, what one feature of that um, you know of that ambition, I think, too, involves um, reclaiming the the legacy, um, reclaiming the the roots and and. Um, you know, one organization that I've just started getting more involved in, just actually officially joined the board today, is um, it's called We Own It, which is um, doing organizing among members of cooperatives and credit unions uh, around the United States. And and um, you know, this is taking a, a somewhat different approach than a lot of uh, uh, a lot of platform co-ops, which is to really challenge the entrenched powers in some of our legacy cooperatives. And revive, uh, uh, revive from that side. Start from where um, where cooperatives already are, um, and and build. Uh, uh, though I know, especially in international work, that's that's uh, a big part of what the um, what the consortium uh, is doing. Um, so, so the questions that I want to um, I want to open up the conversation with um, is uh, are first of all, you know. Where do you see the ambition? How much do you think uh, uh, platform platform cooperativism is capable of? Um, uh, where should we be setting our sights realistically? You know, given I think also the challenges that we've encountered over the last few years. You know, I, I feel over and over again um, uh, uh, the the kind of you know the, the the difficulty of what we're doing because so many of the people. Who are in the trenches trying to build platform co-ops are having so much trouble. Uh, you know, I just went to the website of another one uh, yesterday, uh, uh, about to share it with somebody, and saw it wasn't there anymore. You know, and and the the challenges are are, are so immense, and um, uh, and I, you know, I wonder, how, you know, what do we think we're really capable of? Um, second, you know, is that co-op framing too limiting? You know, are this is a you know a critique, for instance, I've gotten about my book. Um, should we be, um, you know, is that language adequate to the kind of ambition we need in order to meaningfully change the online economy? Um, uh, do we need to um, step back a little bit um, and, and frame the challenge differently? Um, third is, is the question of leadership. Um, uh, uh, what uh, models of, of, of leadership are we looking for? One thing I found over and over in Working on the historical stuff in in the, the the book project was encountering leaders who've been forgotten, really amazing people um, uh, uh, who who uh, had played instrumental roles in having the vision and follow through to um, create the the cooperative legacy today. Um, uh, kind of distinct from the the assumption that I think a lot of people have that. Cooperatives just formed by amorphous groups of people doing things spontaneously together. Um, that that leadership has been really important, and um, and so that's made me think about a lot. What does accountable leadership look like today, um, and how can we um, how can we support our leaders while also ensuring uh, that they're that they're accountable and that they're um, you know appropriate while also having the freedom to you know pursue their visions and and um, uh, and develop them, um, and then finally, uh, and this comes back to the the the, the kind of dream with uh, Ocasio Cortez is is um, in this moment uh, in, in many of our countries and certainly in the United States of of you know a kind of widening apparent polarization, which may be good, may be bad. Um, uh, on the one hand, cooperatives represent this opportunity. Um, for the left, for a, a particular political outlook to, um, uh, to, to push a vision uh, connected with a range of other issues. But also, um, this, is, this is one of the rare issues that cuts across our political divides, at least in some pretty interesting ways. Um, and so I felt really torn about um, how to present this stuff. Do we present it as like the new cutting edge of the, of the progressive movement? Um, uh, or do we uh, present this as a, an opportun opportunity to actually find a new kind of consensus, or is there is that a false dichotom dichotomy? So I'll leave it there, and uh, and I look forward to hearing from the rest of you now. Thanks so much for for being on this conversation.
my sense, and, and I, I've been, you know, listening and, and watching uh, Chomsky reading Heidegger, right? Um, there is a, I think there's a fundamental shift in, in what society is that we should reconsider and, and you know, the employer employee relationship and the, the ways of organizing. So going backward from your questions, I think it's a mistake to put this as a left or right thing. The reality is that the Western society has been organized around uh, concentration of power and, and, and cooperativism is about cooperation, not concentration. So it's just from a different mindset. And I would, I would kind of uh, play it more as a technology that can enable people to be free, truly in the kind of free in cooperation. That's kind of a, I would say it's a new thing. Um, the other option in terms of limiting or not limiting, um, I think the financial system is really optimized for concentration and, and, and everything that we do is sustained by that. Um, you know, MIT has an endowment sustained by concentration of power. Your car, Tesla, whatever you drive, is con you know, it's a product of concentration of power. Um, and there are examples that are not about that, but they're not as efficient. So I think the platform cooperativism can take a, you know, a novel way of determining new business models that in you know, create products and services that are valuable and comparable to the traditional ones. Um, but it's a matter of education, which is, a, 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 I think, a point that could be really, really exciting, which is um, delivery of education and learning. You know, I, I work at MIT in the open learning office. And one of the things that we're seeing is that um, the ability of people to learn is increasingly central to the sustainability of an economy. And the learning systems are really concentrated and, and centralized most of the time in our universities and other centers. Um, platform cooperativism, blockchain, you know, expert networks or whatever are a vehicle to disseminate knowledge differently in a more kind of democratic way. And that eventually will help people organize in, in, in different ways. So I think the platform cooperativism is a substrate. Not, I don't think it's limited limited, uh, limiting at all. But I do think that communicating it as a left instrument of the left or right, I think you're putting yourself in a box that's already really well <laughs> confined and the power system will actually fight it. Um, so I think we're, we're, this is a new way of thinking that we need to promote and, and that's kind of a, I'll stop it there. Great, yeah, that, thank you. I'd, I'd love to hear from others. Um, I'll jump in. Um, my name is uh, Jess Allen. Um, I have been in love with cooperatives since I've lived in Austin, Texas. I spent about 10 years in Austin in a very cooperative environment uh, in a lot of ways and um, have been an entrepreneur, a solo entrepreneur for, you know, 15 years and could never really get the whole cooperative thing. Um, challenges, you know, um, kind of what Enrique said, what I wrote down was really educating um, people on either how to be a member of a cooperative because I've tried multiple times to get people together and try to help them, you know, get, they're excited about the idea and they like the idea, but really none of us really had an idea how to be um, a member. Everyone was in that top down mode and they just kind of expected me to lead and kind of expected me to pull it together. And I just didn't have the tools and the education. I'm so happy to find this group and, and um, be with people that all understand, you know, this, this exciting world of cooperatives. Um, and so, um, and then I would say probably in terms of messaging, um, when you're reaching out to people, have it be about another way to be an entrepreneur, because for me, it seems like when we're working in a worker cooperative environment, um, specifically, you know, it seems like, and I don't have, again, experience myself, but it seems like really the messaging there is, um, this is another way to be an entrepreneur if you want to have your entrepreneurial spirit, but you don't want to be alone. And so, you know, groups where um, young people are and colleges and things like that, and people that want to um, be an entrepreneur but don't want to be alone. That was the other thing I wrote down was really educating the youth that this is another, um, this is another variation of being an entrepreneur um, and to be able to have their, their voices heard. And then um, and then when you get that team together, how do you bring a team together under, you know, uniting under core values is a very corporations, right, or supposedly together. And so how I mix bringing teams together and core values and educating and all that stuff, um, you know, that's been my struggle to bring people together. And so um, those are just my thoughts there. Grateful. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, one other question to add to the mix very briefly for any of you, especially who are building 
uh, you know, new or on old cooperative projects, what do you need? What do we need to make your work easier? Oh, I, I, I can jump in. Uh, money is always, uh, I think money is key, obviously. Uh, and that's the whole thing about concentration of power, which is money. Um, but one of the things that I see, I, I, and I was just in a call with an entrepreneur that I'm helping uh, in a biotech company, it's a medical device company. Um, they're looking to raise $4 million. And, and to do that, you need preferred shares. It's very efficient, you know, the, the existing vehicles for that. In a co-op, the process of raising capital, because you're going to have a, synchronized, a, a synchronicity of capital, you need to start something, you need initial capital, and then you need it to grow. Um, that process is not really well documented and understood and, and there's some dead vehicles that are not necessarily the most efficient and very cumbersome so and, you know start up start that co-op is a, a vehicle that aims to solve that some of that problem but in, in in a way getting the financial grease going faster with methods that are kind of a, already you don't have to reinvent the wheel that are established i think those those instruments to be simple and, and and connected to a governance structure that is cooperative, um, I think would be super helpful just to have a package, so that kickstart package for a cooperative that comes with funding or at least some funding structure. All right, others. I have to go soon, but um, this is Clark Evans. Um, to thank you for your book. I, I'm still halfway through, um, but I wanted to point out on page 183, I was like, wow, someone actually thinks the way I think. This is so cool. I never, you know, you, it's lovely that you've connected history. I, and I had one question about, or one follow up on your feedback. I think awareness is the number one problem. Um, there are so many open source developers with individual resources and, you know, everybody wants to start their own ship. Um, how do we get awareness and get people on the same ship? How do we get people to, 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 to get together? Getting people to, to work together is, it's about knowing that, like, for example, my mother-in-law has some money. She's giving mostly to immigrants, but immigrant movements. But if she knew about cooperatives that were helping immigrants and there was some way to do that and some announcement board and some way to get people connected, I think that would help immensely. Um, I, I was reminded of the Postgres software community. Postgres has been going for 20 some odd years in open source. And one of the main things that made it work was a, a weekly newsletter that it's a lot of work to get together a newsletter and says, this is what everybody's doing and how it goes on for several pages. But everybody who's a member of that community rallies around that around that newsletter, and it it, it formats and or, you know it, it it grows. So anyway, um, there's lots to say, but, but thank you so much. I have to go because I have to get my daughter, but I, I'm going to try to join and listen. Thanks, Clark. Others who who haven't said anything, I'd love to hear any other any other thoughts. Um, I'll I jump in. I'll go, go for it. You were... Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think um, we can celebrate a lot of things that are already happening and already working. So if we can make them transparent and um, yeah, uh, find a good way to, to share the knowledge we have, um, continue doing that. I think this is a, is a good way. And um, I think also being, um, being a group facilitator and um, helping to build self-governed organizations and teams um, since uh, eight years. Um, one of the simple things, as I know, and maybe also the hardest, is to organize around shared principles. So the question is, how can we um, yeah, embody our principles? Um, how can we learn um, how to live upon the, the cooperative principles and other principles we come up with that we know that are, yeah, they need to be updated um, since we are moving in the digital world. So I, yeah, I would um, be interested um, in finding more forums um, to talk about them. And I see a lot of trust is also built um, through meeting people personally. Um, and this takes time. So, be patient and I think it's good to be also yeah um, humble with uh, where we are and, and knowing there's still a lot of work to do and yeah encouraging us uh, to keep going. Thanks for joining us from the dark of night. <laughs> I'll 
I'll jump in uh, now, I guess. Uh, yeah, great. I um, just a quick intro. My name is Gary Brown. Um, I'm. I don't know who else on the call is from Canada, but that's where I am uh, up here in Vancouver. Uh, I, I'm. I'm following along, and I'm trying to figure out because we are building a a a you know, in essence, a platform co-op, but um, my company, Seven Stakes, what I've sort of facilitated need to get the consumers engaged in things like sustainability initiatives and impact investing. And uh, it's very much going to be a membership um, democratic uh, governance. So, you know, the framework itself, while, you know, I'm, I'm all very much interested in helping bootstrap cooperatives and cooperatism and, and working sort of um, as, a, as a wingman to that from a technology perspective. Um, you know, there, it is education, uh, you know, for the most part, I think that, you know, when I'm out having conversations and I'm talking, you know, again, anything that, you know, I'll put my information in the channel. Um, I, I, I do need to remember to register on the, um, uh, is it the uh, Internet of Agreement, um, that, the, the site that you have there, the directory? Um, oh, sure. Same time, I guess, dealing with sort of frame, like framework-based issues where we're implementing, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. I I'm, you know, made my career in open source for the last 25 years dealing with web servers and systems like that. And so, you know, I, I completely understand it now with blockchain, you know, uh, of particular interest for scaling things like fractional ownership. Um, these are things that I want to help, you know, introduce and uh, put back into the community. So um, just putting that out there. And then again, if there's any, um, you know, sort of advice or support, um, you know, things are winding down with the holiday season, but coming back into sort of full launch January and February, I think, you know, if there's some media or community or things that can happen, um, certainly willing to, to participate and interested in hearing about them. And nice to meet you. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, well, I can it, jump in. You know, it, oh yeah, please. Sure. Nathan, if you want to say something. No, go ahead. I am Travis. I'm calling from Brazil. I'm American living here in Brazil. Um, as far as your, your questions, Nathan, I, I would say that I, I agree with a lot of what's been said on the call. I see kind of three different um, fronts, uh, let's say, to, to be battling against. I, I think awareness is huge, and that's definitely a front in and of itself. I think the inside out strategy kind of putting platforms into the cooperative sector um, is important, particularly here in Brazil. Um, and then the outside in, you know, putting cooperativism into, into tech. So as far as those three fronts, um, a lot's already been said, but I just have to echo the awareness point. I think we could probably do a lot with very little templates where we, you know, arrange meetups that was discussed in the last call, you know, 10 slide templates that, we empower people to invite people over to, you know, pitch those templates to them to explain what platform cooperativism is all about, you know, ambassadors in, in their individual city uh, and empower people to, you know, meet up and meet in person. So I think that's probably the biggest awareness uh, feedback that I have is that we need to be trying to find ways to multiply and, and cr make it exponential the amount of, individual face-to-face -face interact group interaction we're having on a, on a local basis however we do that um, and just taking advantage I'd like to ask two questions quickly Nathan to you if I can uh, as far as the book uh, do you have any plans for translation does, does the way you published it uh, hold us back from doing some sort of open source rough and dirty translation to get it into as many languages as we can as fast as we can particularly Portuguese for me at least um, and then what have you learned since putting the book out? You, I think you referenced uh, Gar's feedback as one of the, the critiques that you've gotten about the book. So just maybe wrapping up what kind of, what are your uh, takeaways so far from the feedback you've gotten since publishing? Um, thank, thank you for that. Um, uh, I, I would love to see more translations. Um, I just got word that the Japanese edition was, or Japanese rights were just um, acquired. So, so I guess that's going to happen. Um, I don't know about Portuguese. I'm, I'm think I'm going to be going to Brazil in the fall um, uh, uh, to Sao Paulo. So, um, 
you know, maybe that will spur something. I, I hope it will. Um, and uh, if you uh, want to do kind of rough and dirty uh, translations, let's talk. Um, uh, someplace where my where my uh, publisher can't hear. And um, um, uh, uh, in terms of the the responses um, I've gotten, uh, particularly the you know the the crit critique from Alperovitz, I think most of what he said I I find kind of uh, 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 is in the book already. I mean, that putting it in a broader perspective, I, you know, I, I think it was something that that um, uh, it, you know, not seeing the cooperative as the kind of end all be all solution to everything. Um, you know, to me, if there's if I've learned, learned nothing else from history, it's that diverse models are what work. You know, when you have when you're looking at the cooperative movement as not just one kind of cooperative, but as many kinds depending on different circumstances and kind of overlapping those. Um, as well as having relationships with comparable other other uh, efforts uh, 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 that's in, in a public ownership and and these sorts of things you know yes uh, all of the above um, uh, but one thing that has really actually frustrated me more about the book since publishing it was was not doing enough on land you know land is is just so such an important aspect of of wealth inequality and especially generational wealth and um, and I, I just have a few sections on that and and I wished that I had I had turned attention to that uh, to that much more um, and uh, Michael are, are we should we be wrapping up at this point I just I mean, want to yeah if there are maybe one or two more questions or comments from people we have a little bit more time you know we can probably go until about four o'clock I do want to be respectful of everyone's okay. time and they, they've committed but um, yeah we could probably talk for a little bit longer okay great I can jump in. Uh, maybe uh, one thing I can say to the question of what's needed is that uh, traveling and like presenting these ideas, like in, in Korea and in you know many other countries, was that what I what I clearly um, saw was that it's really very different in each situation, right? Mm -hmm. Very different in each context. I mean, completely different in each context. So I mean, what's uh, what seems to be where there's a lot of energy behind uh, ideas of uh, you know cooperative infrastructure like cooperative internet service providers etc in the uk for example uh in india there is a, a very different kind of set of interests right than in germany or the united states so i think uh, uh I, I agreed completely with manuela right this idea of principles driving these uh uh projects is important than you than uh, the particular uh way in which they uh come into being, right, doesn't matter so much, right? This could be an infrastructure project or a labor project, but the principles are what guides it. Yeah, totally. Maybe we have time for one more question or comment from someone we haven't heard from yet. Comment? Hello? 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 I don't know if I can participate. Yeah, go for it, Ian. Hello there. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Nathan, people. Um, I'm in the UK. I don't know how many people here are participating from the UK, but just as people said, um, the conditions and the context of co the cooperative movement uh, in the UK seem to be very different uh, in terms of status of development from the US. I also happen to have some experience and interest in cooperatives in Sierra Leone, West Africa, where I come from. Um, and one of the things that is particular to my own interest currently in the UK is the way in which the cooperative movement is framed generally and the way in which people connect with it. Um, for example, just being very extreme for a moment, being slightly provocative, um, if I may, the, I'm working on a very large scale cooperative uh, platform co project. And there is interest from people who are coming at it from the concept of commons, mm -hmm. uh, coming at it from the concept of being cooperative as far as anti-capitalist is concerned, because in terms of the context of left and right, um, is very much on the left. And uh, there is a lot of interest and support for that particular uh, ethos and that particular ideology that there is within the cooperative movement uh, a sense in which you begin to um, 
reconnect and redistribute wealth in a way that is actually not possible within a capitalist framework. There are also many others who see the cooperative movement as a way of, yes, distributing wealth, but within a capitalist framework. So they are very much seeing the cooperative movement as simply another, perhaps easier, more collaborative, but just another replacement for a way of participating in a commodification of everything in the marketplace. And I think that the politics, although on the one hand we want to set it aside, on the other hand it is actually fundamental in terms of base values and core values that bring members together. And it may well be that the word cooperativism uh, is so broad now that if we are to develop the platform cooperative movement in a very coherent way, we actually need clarification and definitions in terms of exactly what we mean to do. Do we want to embrace all of these interpretations and have a very broad church? Or do we want to be very specific about what the cooperative movement uh, and platform cooperative movement in particular is offering as an alternative to the status quo? That's just my... Thank take. you. Thank you for that. I mean, I, 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 I um, you know, I, I, I think I tend to be, to feel kind of tempted by the, by the possibility of, of crossing lines and the kind of mysteriousness of it of um, the way in which, for instance, the, the Democratic and Republican platforms both call for expanding employee ownership of, of businesses. Um, uh, and and uh, they have totally different rationales for doing that, right? The, the Republicans want to do it to expand capitalism, right? And the Democrats want to do it for, um, uh, for you know, dealing with income inequality, something like that, right? And then there's also the weirdness of crossing tools. So for instance, right now, um, there's a lot of interest, like on on among people of the left, in like in the employee stock ownership plan model and using and expanding employee own, stock ownership, which which was invented by a guy who wrote a book literally called the Capitalist Manifesto. Um, you know, yet his tool um, is something you know that that um, you know that people have, on the left have have you know see a great deal of promise in in some cases, in some cases not. Um, but, you know, I, I guess to me, part of the, um, you know, the, one of the fascinating things about this, about this movement, about this tradition of, of cooperativism is that things that get adopted for one reason can then transfer to other rationales. It can go both ways. For instance, the, you know, the um, rural electric cooperatives in the United States were for decades seen as creeping socialism. You know, Eisenhower in the 50s, you know, regarded them as such, and Nixon, and, and then, um, and then it kind of flipped when Bill Clinton turned against them and the Democratic Party became much more urban. Then they became kind of stalwarts of good old conservative America, right? Um, and, uh, uh, and so there's, there's a funny way in which the, the, the tools, the same structures um, uh, 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 can seem capable of, ha uh, of being used in, in, uh, in, in all sorts of ways. And, uh, and you know, maybe that this comes back to that question of principles you know, maybe that comes, you know, which has been repeated over and over, uh, that we do need to be really clear in articulating, uh, articulating our principles. For instance, in the United States, we have a very stripped down three point version of what a cooperative is uh, that is used by the Department of Agriculture. Um, it was just used by, a, a, you know, an executive at CoBank at a conference here in, in Colorado that I organized uh, last month. And, and um, it's kind of the cooperative devoid of you know, of kind of um, uh, uh, community responsibility and so forth. It's just a very, very strict uh, definition of, of the business structure. Um, uh, and, and, you know, and that to me uh, uh, points back to the importance of kind of international solidarity and, and relationship through things like the seven principles. You know, that, that to me, it's kind of a stodgy document. It's a funny one. It, it's agreed on by people with wildly different backgrounds and so forth. But to me, it's very precious because it's a statement of values that um, is supposed to kind of hold globally. And there's, a, there's some colonialism in it as well. Um, and, but there's also a, uh, a global conversation uh, uh, at work in the background of it. Um, and I, um, I, you know, so I, I think maybe we should end on that, you know, that point about values um, and, and, and principles and, and making sure that we're, um, you know, we're holding those, we're holding those dear and that we're, 
uh, uh, you know, recognizing the, the power of, of the, the solidarity that's already been built uh, through, you know, these, uh, these debates and these, and these, um, uh, uh, the, the principles that have arisen from them uh, for the past century and a half. Cool. Thank you so much, Nathan, for your comments. And do you want to let people know how to be in touch with you on Twitter um, if they have more follow-up questions or, or want to check out more of your work? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, just NTNSNDR at Twitter. Uh, please be in touch. One, one homework assignment I would love for anybody interested in it. If you um, want to, to uh, uh, I, I've become a I, I've developed a pretty good bibliography of, of historical co-op co stuff. Oh no, I made a huge mess. And um, you know, books like this, this was just given to me when I mentioned this to a uh, 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 health co-op entrepreneur in Colorado here. Um, she went out and got this beautiful old copy of this book by Michael Shadid, who uh, was a, a Syrian um, uh, immigrant to the, to the US in the 20s and 30s, tried to start this um, amazing uh, 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 consumer-owned, uh, medical system, and uh, you know, just remarkable person. My assignment is um, is read some history of some aspect of uh, of uh, cooperative enterprise or some leader, something uh, that came before, and go deep on one thing uh, just to explore this. Um, uh, and and please, if you want a suggestion, reach out to me on Twitter. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing, and I'll try to come up with the best suggestion I can uh, based on the you know the work that went into the book. Uh, I I just find this going deep into these histories um, really nourishing, actually, in thinking about entrepreneurship and and uh, 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 and and uh, you know new projects today. So thanks so much for um, for everybody joining and all that you shared. Cool. Well, now we all have our homework assignment due to Nathan sometime very soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. And thanks, Nathan, again, for your great and insightful comments. Um, we will be posting uh, this on our website. So if you missed anything, uh, you can review it there. And also uh, keep a lookout for our next community hangout sometime in late January. But uh, I think we'll leave it at that. And um, thanks so much, everyone, for taking time to join us today. Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>